here and now, here we are with Ahmad of Palestine. And we have uh, a crisis again and again to confront here. And we need to discuss uh, what to do, what is to be done, as one once said. Uh, what is your recommendation, Ahmed? Well, order, but, um, you know, it's, uh, we're still on it again, right again, but as honest, uh, threatening uh, for more uh, genocide and crimes and massacres against Rafah, basically telling the Palestinian resistance, either you release uh, the Zionist um, prisoners you're holding, uh, or we will uh, go into Rafah and uh, do our things that we've been doing for the past, past uh, 132 days of massacres and genocide against the Palestinian people. Basically, this is a, a real terrorist threat, okay? And uh, they are not willing to uh, accept the international uh, legalities of uh, what an occupier should do, of not killing uh, their its uh, occupied people, uh, stop its uh, starving them, uh, allowing them the freedom of movement, and allowing them food, water, and medicine, and electricity. Basically, the the resistance, what it asked, is uh, within the limits uh, of the international law, whereas Zion is refusing to do that. There have been some uh, strategies that I've uh, heard with, uh, discussed uh, to deal with uh, when the... Uh, uh, the food aid and um, medicines which are being blocked gated at the uh, Eretz crossing by Zionist fanatics. We call, Hanun crossing. we call it Beit Hanun crossing. We don't use the Zionist terminology. Oh, I've never heard Beit Hanun. Mm -hmm. It's called Beit Hanun uh, uh, crossing. Eretz means uh, Zionist word for the land. Oh, yeah. We don't, yeah let's, That's right. Let's use the, oh, the yeah. Palestinian terminology. Yeah, anyway. Okay, I understand. Yeah. At Beit Hanun, you know, the Zionists are blockading the road, you know, the entrance into the crossing, and they're not allowing uh, aid trucks to go through. And I don't know if they're able to stop all the trucks. I don't know if they're still doing it, but I, I think so. They even set up tents there, and nobody's going in there to stop them. I mean, actually, mm -hmm. well, actually, this is there's two crossings. Uh, actually, there's uh, called Karm Abu Salim crossing. In the south, uh, it's in a triangle between the Palestinians' 1948 areas, Gaza and Egypt, and uh, Beit Hanun crossing. Uh, what is being this allow allowed in is about a meager 100, 120 trucks of uh, not ne not needed <laughs> aid, basically like COVID-19 uh, medication, for example. Okay. And for those Zionists who was blockading the tracks, actually they are part of, they are members of Likud, members of the Ben Gvir group, and uh, members of Smotrich uh, group. They are being sent to a, a military area. Uh, when you have a military area, you not you not don't allow uh, civilians in, but they allow them in. So it's a it's part of the gimmicks uh, the. Mm. so-called Zionist coalition doing in order to delaying and blockading uh, the needed uh, aid. So it's 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 been, it's Netanyahu's, uh, again, gimmicks uh, to uh, say, oh, we are a free country and we, uh, you know, our people could do whatever they want, but in a military situation should be a military exclusion zone. But they still, mm. they actually, they, they send kids there. Mm. to harm way because this is a military area just across from the Gaza Strip so where the Palestinian resistance can bomb uh, these areas and the children could die and they're still putting their own children into harm's way to to uh, to uh, do mm. or carry out another war crime of blockading uh, supplies to the starved and dispossessed Palestinians in the Gaza Strip I still have my uh t-shirt from 2001 when we had uh 
in Chicago, we had a conference to set up the uh, Jewish uh, movement to end the occupation here. It's oh, getting nice, uh, nice. full of holes, though. Yeah, it's nice. Sure. But it's getting old, you know, like, you know, it's coming apart. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's been a long time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this it has, has to be uh, 2020. So, yeah. you know, like the strategies yeah, to cope, it, you know, it, with this yeah, uh, Beit Anun, uh, crossing and where they've occupied it. Uh, if there's talk, you know, of uh, having uh, international volunteers coming there, Sorry? you know, could you there's that? there's a there's a present uh, uh, discussions of having um, it. there's discussions of international volunteers going to Beit Hanun crossing to take care of the Zionists and open up the uh, roadway. Oh, your video is frozen. I hope you come back. Ah, Ahmed is coming back. Okay, you're back. Good. Yeah, something uh, happened. I don't know. Maybe the Zionists can lock us talking this day. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. Yeah, that's not the usual, you know, but we're supposed to be encrypted here. But anyway. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. You know, that's all right. It, it happens. So I was telling you that, you know, like discussions of having an international movement of volunteers going down there to the Beit Anun crossing and taking care of the Zionists, opening up the roadway and letting the f food aid and medical aid, you know, into Gaza. That's what's mm -hmm. being discussed. Yeah. Then the, the Zionists will tell you, this is a military exclusion zone. You can't go there. It's a military area. <laughs> okay. At the same time, why don't the Palestinian refugees take over the uh, Beit Anun crossing and bring in the food aid? They've got nothing to lose, Which you know? Which refugees? The, the Palestinian refugees. They can where? move in there and take over the from crossing. Where? From where? From Rafa. You know, you know, like even if you move walk one meter to get water, they will shoot you. This is this is a killing zone there. Oh. You know, oh. it's 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 a Zionist having employed or uh, posted uh, post uh, snipers all uh, oh, all yeah. over the area. So uh, anybody try to even come near the the, the road into Beit Hanun crossing would be shot or even a tank with a tank shell. So that's wow. not yeah. it's not, it's a it's a it's a it's a military uh, exclusion zone. They will oh, bomb. Oh yeah, that's what they call it. Even anybody. yeah. So okay, uh, so that, then there's. Then there's the, uh, the the other option. That is that the uh, Hamas should be arming the population. Okay? Do they have the arms? They should have the arms. If they don't have the arms, they have to get the arms. They have to distribute them to the population because, you know, the population, you yeah, know, has yeah, to be yeah. ready to fight, you know, to defend themselves yeah. because yeah. they have no other defense but themselves now. Who can they rely yeah, but upon you have a but themselves? War. You're, not, you're, not, you're not fighting a, a, a rifle war. You're not, you're fighting a symmetrical war where Israel employs about 14 different types of drones. Many of them are armed, which <laughs> which covers literally the entire size or area of the Gaza Strip. So any any movement or suspicion of somebody carrying something, he will or she will be blown up to smithereens. So it's not the issue you're not talking about. Uh, the partisan of 1942-43 were just kind of uh, as more symmetrical, uh, rather a symmetrical warfare between the partisan and the, the Nazis. We have, as I said, there, there are 14 different types of drones. Uh, you have the helicopters, you have the F-16, F-15, F-35s, you have the tanks, you have snipers, you have um, artillery, artillery, and uh, there's no way uh, in, in hell that any civilian can do any uh, resistant damage on the Zionists. Even the, the resistance that, that who are trained, they actually, they come out from the rubble, within seconds they attack and they disappear because they knew if they stay where they are at, 
the bombs will be falling up, up on top of them, which it's which is always happening. Mm -hmm. So we we were talking about it's it's useless. It's it's pointless. It's that's what we call it. It's a genocide. The, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, for example, the there was a footage uh, I, two days ago of two or three people they're trying to uh, restart uh, a motorcycle. Uh, they obviously from the Israeli uh, camera from at atop, they had no weapons whatsoever, and they just shelled them. They shelled them with a missile, and they killed the three of them. So, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. It just uh, this is a, we're talking about a, a, a really a genocidal war. The Zionists are carrying against our people. It just it's there out to kill. They're not mm -hmm. out to fight. You know, they're not out to occupy or reoccupy. Mm -hmm. They are out there to kill anybody they can have their hands on. Okay, so they're trying to force people to uh, to break into uh, Egypt and go into the Sinai. But, uh, yeah, they, but they deny this. And they say, oh, well, I've heard these, you know, the Israeli spokesmen say, you know, the military say, oh, well, they can go to the destroyed areas in the north. But if they go to the north, they'll be killed anyway, right? Well, that's if they, they if they survive the the snipe the sniping and the fourteen types of different drones which can fly as as low as ten to fifteen meters above the the ground. Uh, there's no place to go to hide. There's no shelter. There's no food. There's no water. Uh, there's uh, nothing. Absolutely nothing. They're dealing with the Palestinian uh, population, civilian, by a civil, civil, civilian, civilian population, as a herd uh, of sheep or cows. Move from this area to another area, with with no adequate uh, means of basic living. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, basically, the Palestinians have nowhere to go in on the Gaza Strip. Mm -hmm. So. They're just saying this for the international uh, community. Say, oh, we are doing this to to, to help them and to to safeguard th their lives. Um, that's yeah, the even the way they say it, you know, is so contradictory. You know, they, when they say they can go to the destroyed areas, you know, like if it's destroyed, yeah. you know, how can they go there? You know, like there's nothing yeah, to go to. I mean, what like what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do in a, in, a, in in buildings with the rubbles? Yeah. There's nothing. Absolutely nothing. Even now, the people who are still living in the Gaza, in the northern Gaza Strip, the Gaza city, and adjacent areas, uh, there's actually a, a, a starvation uh, unfolding there. The people they are just eating whatever left of animal feed, mm -hmm. and there's people uh, they eat maybe once every two three days, uh, just mm -hmm. inadequate nutrition. There's about there's malnutrition, there's disease, uh, you name it, and people dying. There are people dying in, 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 in huge numbers, not by the Israeli army. It's by uh, disease and starvation and malnutrition, especially women, children, mm -hmm. the elderly. Mm -hmm. I heard about uh, three crocodile tears today. Canada, Australia, and New Zealand put out a press release saying that the Rafa operation should be stopped. It's already oh, really? started, you know, like yeah. they didn't even ask for it to be canceled. No, it's already started. And they're just, you know, uh, smearing themselves, you know, with crocodile tears in order to remove their blame, you know, for the ongoing genocide and the Rafa operation continues. Uh, well, it's it's predictable. This is this is phase two in supporting the Zionist genocide. Phase one was they were all on board, you know, go get them kill them, you know, Israel has the right to defend itself, all that, you know, cliche uh, they use mm -hmm. for years. Now when it's it's a clear-cut genocide, and after the ICJ said it is a, a possibility of a genocide, so that the tune uh, changed to, oh, don't do that, it's not good, but when it comes to real action, there's no real action, just uh, lip service, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Canada until now was still uh, is still uh, supporting uh, also Australia and the rest supporting Israel right to defend itself uh, the yes. right to crush 
uh, the terrorists and uh, to release all the so-called hostages from the hands of the resistance versus uh, not a word of Bani Israel, uh, what she's doing is just a genocide. Mm. Uh, yeah, Canada is still allowing a, a war arms, you know, to be shipped to Israel. Yeah. Absolutely. Manufactured Absolutely. in Canada. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. $28 million yeah. being shipped within the past four, four months from Canada to United to the Israeli army to kill mm. Palestinians. So it's yeah. it's just, uh, as you said, it's crocodile uh, tears. Yeah. <clears throat> in terms of uh, other uh, fronts uh, to confront uh, Zionism, I mean, over the years, you know, like I've done all this work here, you know, like I've got all these books, you know, there's my doctoral thesis, and then, you know, right to the the most recent book here, you know, the Federation of Palestinian and Hebrew Nations. As long mm -hmm. as there's no Israel, you know, people can are safe. But uh, it doesn't work. You know, like books on their own, you know, like that book was even banned by the Jewish Public Library for a few months. I got it back in, you know, but thing is, you know, people are not willing to reconsider their position. You know, they're very fanatical, the ones who are fanatic. And others, you know, are quiet. Yeah, the Zionists, the Jewish Zionists, you know, yeah. are, are, are as fanatical as they were before. And they even came to, you know, attack the banner at my vigil in front of the Jewish community campus here in Montreal. And, you know, the other half of the Jewish community, you know, they seem to be sympathetic or they seem to understand, you know, when they're passing me, you know, like judging from them and those, you know, passing the cars. But they're not willing to speak out, you know, they're sort of, you know, afraid, you know, they're maybe they'll whisper something and, you know, the best, you know, that they'll come and do. And then there's the assimilated Jewish population, you know, which, you know, are out, you know, at the Palestinian demonstrations, but they won't come to a Jewish demonstration. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. you know, like it's, but nonetheless, you know, even, you know, being alone there, you know, like that's enough, you know, one person, even in the Jewish community who stands up, you know, against the Zionists, you know, everybody, you know, pays attention to that, you know, because they feel the pressure of the critique that's uh, been made, you know, because they know that there's a validity to it. And so they get angry that I'm standing there and affirming that this is a genocide. You know, when I shout out, you know, like no genocide, you know, people stop and they look at me and say, what, what was that? You know, like, how can you say that? And I, so I shout back, yes, I said genocide. You heard it, me, you know? And then they sort of, you know, start to think, you know, you have to sort of really you know, like find a way into their, you know, like thinking in order to sort of, you know, convince them that they've been lied to because they don't want to believe that they've been lied to, you know, because they're supposed to be, you know, like, you know, they're speaking in the name of the Jewish people, you know, so how can they be lying, you know, because they're speaking in the name, you know, like it's such a, such, a, you know, like a cliche, you know, that they've built up on lies and lies. My son, Saylee, had a really good idea you know like because this whole thing is is based upon you know the lies that he perpetuated you know be, with respect to october the 7th you know there was a lie of the 40 beheaded burnt babies the lie of the mass rapes and etc etc i went and did a video on each of the websites you know from the zionists you know where they say they have the proof for these atrocities and i went through each of the videos that they presented and none of them backed up you know what their accusations were so my so saley said you know like they should be sued for defamation, because they're lying to the people. And then this will expose them right away, because they will, you know, like, uh, you know, have to sort of, you know, provide the proof, and the proof is not available. And, um, and not only that, you know, but just contesting, you know, the fact that it's a lie is very important, because even, you know, like UN spokespeople, you know, say, in spite of the atrocities, that are, they talk about October the 7th as if the atrocities are to be assumed, that it's been proven already, but there's no proof. You know, so this is another way, you know, to open up a front, as well as the uh, the the front of contestation that I've opened up within inside the Jewish community with with the vigil, you know, in front of the Jewish community campus. I mm -hmm. think there has to be multiple fronts, legal. Uh, the ICJ is going to come across, you know, with recommendations soon, you know, to the Security Council what the Security Council should be doing. So there's going to be a resolution coming up now, which is being negotiated with Algeria, right? So this is going to come up. If the UN, EU, United Nations, you know, vetoes this resolution, they're, you know, like United destroying States. themselves. That's yeah. self-destruction. That's suicide, political suicide. You uh, know, I, I think, think that they will be forced to abstain. And then they can I get think, through I think sanctions. The States, they will vote, will veto it. They, they have no choice because the, the United States uh, administration 
It's actually been led by uh, Anthony Blinken. He's a dangerous man. He's a Zionist. He's an ardent Zionist. So is uh, the president of the United States. He's an ardent Zionist, and he was he's a self-proclaimed Zionist. And he, the one who said, I repeat it, and because it's very important, he said, if we didn't have Israel, we should have created an Israel in the Middle East. So therefore, uh, these guys are being led blindly behind the, the Zionist will of uh, of a genocide uh, and justifying genocide and, and supporting and covering up for the genocide, even if that means they become a pariah and uh, outlawed by the international law. Uh, the, so uh, my hunch tells me that the United States will veto it. But I will be surprised if they abstain, if uh, this goes to the United Nations Security Council. Back to the Zionists in, 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 in Canada and, and the rest of the Western world, um, the Zionists are actually, they are part of a cult, okay? They're, they're brain, brainwashed since they were children by Zionist families, uh, fed uh, by lies and weaponizing the Holocaust. So uh, it's just, uh, it, uh, to my, uh, uh, to my uh, in, in the trauma, putting the trauma in the mind of the people, then weaponizing that trauma into a political uh, uh, tool. Then uh, to become subservient to the Zionist fascist uh, European colonial movement, which embodied in, in the embodiment of the state of Israel. So these people, they, they will continue uh, living and breathing this lie, uh, this cult uh, culture, unless they are being hit by, like I'm talking, I mean, in, in a metaphoric uh, way, hit in the head. To wake up all of a sudden. Oh, what am I? What, what I was? What, what I'm doing? It's like somebody who's been in a in a in a trauma, and mm -hmm. he been in a psychosis uh, state, and all of a sudden something happened in his life. Works him right up, or works him right up, and goes to a, a therapist and said, "I've been living all my life life mm -hmm. this." So uh, this is the situation with the Zionists. So uh, what I see those. Zionists turning to be anti-Zionist is people, uh, they've been hit hard on their head, like the, the genocide in Gaza to wake up and see the light being living through. I've been, I've been seeing so many testimonies by uh, ex-Zionist Jews in North America. It's, it's uh, heartwarming to see them coming along and becoming anti-Zionist. It's not just being non-Zionist, no, no, anti-Zionist and vehemently and designs and that's kudos to them really mm -hmm. really and yeah. i believe that one of the main and the most important tool to dismantle zionism and dismantle the zionist state of 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 israel is the jews themselves to fight this uh, it actually is it's if talking about anti-semitism anti-semitism is embodiment in, in the Zionist state, making the... the, the, yeah. the, the yeah, exactly. Yeah. The Zionist yeah. ideology assumes that everyone is anti-Semitic and assumes that it is a permanent state and assumes that they have to separate themselves. You know, the separation principle, you know, from anybody else. <laughs> and uh, basically, you know, they're condemning, you know, Jewish people to uh, uh, oblivion, you know, because uh, if that's the case, you know, there's no way to survive. The only way to survive, really, is what the Jewish Bund did as partisans. We fought against the Nazis. We stopped the Nazis together with the Red Army. And, oh. uh, you know, like a direct action is the only way to confront fascism, not to run away from it. You know, when the Zionists, you know, start accusing me of various things and insulting me, I saying, yeah, sure. You know, you know, they call me a capo. You know, Kapo was, you know, the yeah, Jewish yeah, police know inside that. the ghetto. Okay. Yes. So yeah. <laughs> I say, oh, yeah, 70% of the Jewish Kapos were Zionists, you know, like you. 100%. 100% of the Kapos, they were Zionists. The well, Zionists I read that. Uh, uh, it's 70.1%. 70, 70. Okay. And the well, rest, you know, were, were, the rest dupes, baby, were dupes or corrupt, Zionist. you know, bourgeois, petty bourgeois <laughs> elements, you know, like who were Zion, pro Zionist anyway, you know, but they just weren't members of a Zionist party. The but Zionist, 70% were registered Zionists, you know. <laughs> the, Zionist, the Zionists collaborated with the Zionist, with the fascist and the Nazis ah. since, the, since the 20s, not even the yes. 30s. So yeah. they worked hand in hand, even through the Second World War. Yeah. With the Zionists, they played two, 
to each other, against each other. They work with the British and they work with the with the Nazis. Okay, mm. all to get the poor Jewish people into Palestine. That's what they want. They didn't care yeah. about yeah. the lives who been who be, been perished in the concentration yeah. camps. How many poor Jews being killed? All that we mm. want, they want the best of all. Then. Mm. After 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 uh, the Second World War, they pushed hard to hang all the Nazis, so those the Nazis will not say anything about the Zionist collaboration with them. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. They worked so hard. They pushed so hard to kill all the the, the Nazi leaders. I'm not saying they should Eichmann, not. Be. Eichmann, he dealt with the Nazis. Yeah, he sent yeah. out uh, one thousand eight hundred and forty three Zionists, you know, from Hungary, yeah. and the rest he yeah. sent, you know, to Auschwitz. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I mean, it, 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 once actually, uh, it's 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 within the Zionist archives, and uh, they about some I think the Bulgarian Jews or Hungarian Jews I can't remember which Jews, but somebody was telling Ben Gordon that those Jews in in Hungary I think they are refusing to come to the land of Israel, and uh, the the Zionists are rounding them up. He said, I didn't care about those Jews. The cows in the in Eretz Israel is more important to me than those anti-Zionist Jews. He mm. killed them. He literally yeah. said, oh, I didn't care about them. As long as yeah. they're not Zionist, they're dead. Yeah. And then after the Holocaust, you know, they didn't want the Canada and the United States to allow Jewish refugees in unless they had, you know, a sponsor who was a relative, you know, already a citizen. But they weren't oh. uh, the refugees weren't allowed, you know, into these countries, into these Christian nation states. They no, were no, pushed no, no. into I Palestine. I won't blame, I, I won't blame the, the Christian nation states as much as I, uh, I uh, accuse the Zionists. Oh, the Zionists supported that. Of, yeah, they supported the anti-Semites. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Zionist idea. The, yeah. If those, if those Zionists, those people, they should go to Palestine. Don't allow them into Canada and the States. And it's a known. It's a yeah. known. But you know, Canada apologized for that, but they never said we did that on uh, the pressure by the Zionists. They did not reveal that. It's... No, yeah. No, and no. also they never uh, re revoked the visas for the Nazis that they brought in. They brought in the Nazis and kept the Jewish people out. Okay, yeah. Uh, well, of course. Of yeah. course. And the same thing happened it's not recently, you know, like when the Jewish, Russian Jewish people wanted to leave Russia, they didn't want to go to Palestine. They wanted to go nope. to the United States of America, to New York City, right? Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. okay, and, they, and, and also Germany, they wanted to go to Germany. So yeah. Israel told German, Germany to, sh to cut, shut off the visas, you know, for the Russian Jewish immigrants, you know, wanted to come to Germany mm -hmm. so as to force okay. them to go to Israel. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's clear. I mean, yeah. the, the collaboration between the West and the Nazis, yeah. it, it was uh, uh, apparent just a few months ago when uh, the Parliament of Canada, uh, you know, uh, had a standing ovation to a Nazi, uh, when yeah. a, a Ukrainian Nazi. Yeah. Okay. And uh, then the Prime Minister of Canada said, oh, it's not my fault. It's not our fault. It's just, it's a speaker's fault. Help yeah, out. sure. Yeah. But uh -huh. I've heard that they invited them to a private party afterwards as well. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> exactly. In Toronto, they had a gala where Prime Minister was there and the Zionist Nazi uh, Zelensky was uh, honored oh. by uh, the, the Ukrainian Nazis in, in Toronto. Wow. It, it, why, yeah. why, why, why surprise when we have our, uh, you know, uh, a, a prominent minister in Canada, her father, her grandfather was a Nazi. Yeah. I remember, people. you know, growing up in Toronto as a teenager, you know, that the, 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 the neo-Nazis, the Nazis, they would parade around the city at the city hall, you know, parading around, you know, like saying that the Holocaust was a hoax, you know, and they allowed them, you know, this was okay. Even of though course. the criminal code says that hate speech, you know, is supposed to be criminal, but no, 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 yes. they were protected. They were protected by the police. This is, yeah. you know, I saw this, you know, like in, oh, right in front of me, you know, it's incredible. No, you know, the, we all we all know who supported the Nazis when it started. It's the entire West. They were yeah. hoping the Nazis would go against Russia. That's yeah. all they want, against the Soviet Union. Yeah, even but, the British royal family and Queen Elizabeth, you know, used to be doing, you know, practicing their Nazi salutes. 
because they, you know, wanted uh, Mosley, the fascist, to become prime minister, and they wanted uh, the uh, previous King Edward, you know, to be reinstalled as the Nazi king, you know, of Britain yeah, uh, yeah, under yeah. tutelage, you know, of the Nazi regime. That was yeah. all planned, you know. <laughs> and the Dutch family, royal family, they invested in the slave factories where my aunt, you know, was a slave worker. And they made big profits, you know. <laughs> oh, my. You know, like not having to pay I mean, workers it, is very convenient. It, it's very, it's very convenient for the Zionists who work with the Nazis, uh, who uh, actually they practice uh, genocide against the Jews in the concentration camps as uh, capos and collaborators. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, there's so much uh, facts uh, that uh, shows the collaboration between the fascists in Europe. And then at the Zionist uh, movement, uh, even uh, we know even the the state of Israel collaborated with uh, Nazi like or uh, fascist like uh, um, governments in in different parts of the world, like Pinochet, Pinochet, Pinochet South Africa. Uh, you know any any despicable regime that uh, oppresses its people, they have uh, apartheid a South people. Africa. Oh. Yeah. It all fits. Secure, they yeah. all fit together, you know, like absolutely. colonial projects. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So then they turn around now, the Zionists, and said, you know, Hamas is a Nazi like uh, group. You know, that's that's come on. Give me a break. You know, no, they're the ones who are Nazis. And Hamas says so, so too. Yeah. OK, we only have a couple of minutes left, you know, so okay. please let me ask you to conclude and then uh, I will as well. We conclude that the Palestinian resistance, uh, they cannot change their, uh, you know, uh, demands, which is within the international law and uh, accept them, acceptable norms of uh, of uh, humanity. The Z I believe the Zionists, uh, um, they will go into Rafah and there will be a massacre. And uh, I think there will be a big war eventually in uh, with Hezbollah and maybe Syria as well. I hope not, but this is my prediction. Hmm. Well, it. I would uh, say that uh, once again, we have been able to break through the censorship and uh, we have presented uh, uh, your voice to the uh, Anglophone uh, community of the world so that uh, we can overcome the uh, media distortions that have been presented. And uh, I am uh, thinking that there is so great a crisis happening now that this will become a crisis of Zionism and Zionism will lose its ide ideological supremacy. And they are a white supremacist uh, ideology that is dominating uh, the minds of uh, half of the Jewish community and most of the Israeli Jewish community presently. Well, we can overthrow the vast this. Majority, yeah, vast majority this is, yeah. and this is so big that when they are exposed, and they will be, and when they are defeated by the, with the you know, backing of the whole third world against the first world, you know, this is an international conflict it in is. which we are, we are going to be victorious because a failing empire cannot you know, uh, reverse uh, historical processes, you know, on the, you know, on, in the immediate time with, you know, military means alone, you know, there is just no way, you know, because they've lost on the economic front to China, they've lost uh, on the political front, you know, to Palestine and Gaza now, and they no, are no longer claimed to be, you know, the free world in the favor of democracy and, you know, humanitarian and international law, and blah, blah, blah. it's all gone, you know, yep. so the only thing they have left is military uh, superiority. That's and they will, uh, be defeated. they will be defeated, you know, that's all there is to it. So um, will rise and this again. will mean, and this will be defeated, you know, like for, with a Jewish revolution inside the Jewish people who will overthrow the Zionist leadership. And we will have a complete transformation of the Jewish people as well as a result. And then the Israelis, the Jewish Israelis, they will have to learn. They will I just agree. have to learn because they won't have any other choice. That's it. That's I all. agree. I agree 100%. Okay. Until next time. Okay, take care. Bye-bye now. Yeah,